Breakthrough Media. speech on guns by a Virginia delegate running for Senate causes Democrats to walk out of the room. Watch this. If we want to have an open and honest debate, I am all for that. Let's do that. But it does start with a certain degree of mutual respect. It, it starts with a certain degree of not assuming that the only reason why we believe in the Second Amendment is because the NRA paid us off. Well, if that's the sort of logic you want to use, why don't you go take a look at how much money the NRA spends and how much money Planned Parenthood spends? There's a number of factors that we're trying to address with this issue, but it always gets reverted right back to gun controls being the only potential solution. And then on top of that, some of the rhetoric that has been used to describe us has just been completely unacceptable. And at that point, I, I just gotten tired of it. I want you to, uh, we're going to play a soundbite of someone who was offended by your speech. And this is Democratic Delegate Joseph Lindsay. Listen to this and then we want to get your reaction. Today, I have been offended as I can never recall since being a part of this body. And I have seen many of my colleagues emotionally shaken and, and bothered by, by either a lack of, of, of concern for facts or just simply uh, playing to the, to the media, playing to the cameras. Nick, what do you say to him? Delegate Lindsay is a good and honorable man, and I certainly didn't intend any offense toward him. But one of the things I get concerned about, especially with, with this argument and the whole left-right paradigm, is that more and more offense is used as a weapon in which to turn away debate. And, and I'm not going to accept that. If there's a way that I can, I can convey my message uh, to where Delegate Lindsay won't be offended, but we can get the point across, I'm happy to do that. But what I'm not going to accept is sitting there listening to dem his, some of his Democrat colleagues refer to me, compare me to a Nazi, compare me to a segregationist. I had one of his Democrat colleagues in a subcommittee meeting tell me that if I didn't vote for his particular bill, then I was on the side of terrorists and I wanted weapons to fall in the hands of terrorists. What sort of offense do you think someone like me with two combat tours who has lost friends to terrorists thought about something like that? Yeah. So if we're going to get back to meaningful dialogue, it's going to require a certain level of mutual respect. If Delegate Lindsay can help me understand mm -hmm. what part of my remarks were offensive, I'd be glad to have that discussion with him. But we have to be honest about what's really going on in our schools, what's really going on in our communities. Right. And I'm not going to accept this false narrative that constantly gets thrown at Republicans and conservatives because we support Second Amendment rights. Right. We just need the willpower and intestinal fortitude to take on the NRA and get something done for the safety of the men, women, and particularly the children in our schools. We all know that the NRA has held the Republican Party in a vice lock. We have a moral responsibility to tell the NRA that they are not going to dictate gun policy in this country anymore. Well, to paraphrase Chuck Schumer, we all know that Dianne Feinstein wants to take your guns as well. Someone else who knows that fact is Candace Owens, Director of Urban Engagement for Turning Point USA, the largest conservative student movement in America, and she joins us live on set. Candace, thanks for being here. I'm so happy to be here for welcome. the first time. So you heard those, yeah, welcome. It's great to have you. You heard those Democrats. They're not big fans of the NRA. You took a different approach recently as it pertains to the, and you're a former Democrat. I am. Who just joined an organization that yes. starts with N and ends with A. <laughs> yes, I absolutely did. I just joined the NRA. I happen to fall into the window of people that knows my history. I'm a black American, and I know that the NRA was started as a civil rights organization, um, training black Americans to arm themselves and defend themselves against the KKK. So it's incredulous to me that they stand on that platform. I've never heard that before. That's so interesting. It is. It's incredibly interesting and it's so important because what the Democrats have been so successful at is wiping away history and rewriting it. Okay? So it's very important that black Americans take a stand and defend the NRA in the same way that they defended us. And, and that's why you told us before we came on that 
something clicked and you said, I got to speak out. What was that moment? It, it was just understanding that they were using racism as a narrative, right? Um, sort of, I always call it ideological slavery. Um, they want to always keep the black vote and they have to keep the themes of racism alive. That's the only way to do it. So it's going to take new black leaders speaking out against this and I want to be one of them. You are so right. It's the messenger and the message. The messenger matters and I'm glad that you've stepped forward. Now, 62% of millennials said that if the 2018 elections were held today, they would vote Democratic, only 29% Republican. What do Republicans and Donald Trump and his, his campaign, which he's just launched, what do they need to do to win back millennials? Well, first of all, we're talking about polls, right? So I don't necessarily believe the numbers that it's I see poll, yeah. right? that I see whatsoever. I mean, you just have to understand Donald Trump is sitting in the White House and um, the, the Hill publication ran polls and they told us that um, he was absolutely not going to be in the White House, that Hillary Clinton was going to win. But let's assume that the polls are accurate. Okay. The number one thing to pay attention to is that there is a growing youth movement that is happening, a conservative movement, movement that is happening, and it is so very exciting right now. So they have to sort of change the lines of communication and get these kids excited. I, I went to a conference on um, the Student Action Summit and Ben Shapiro came on stage and it was like watching Elvis Presley come back from the dead. So it's a really cool time to be a conservative in this country. Well, what's the issue that will bring, cons uh, that really speaks to youth millennials? I, I think there are so many issues. I mean, like I said, we were just talking about the NRA organization. I think they're understanding that um, the themes have been hijacked and history has been rewritten. Are they understanding that? Because their college professors are telling them a different story. And how do you cut past the orthodoxy and the ideology of higher education, which is telling them to love socialism right. and hate the NRA? It's, it's, okay. it's re-educating them. And I'm telling you, we see at Turning Point, Turning Point USA, there are so many conservatives that are on campus and they are winning um, you know, these student body presidencies because they understand that that's exactly the problem, is that these schools control the budget, right? You have these, these very leftist organizations and these leftist pre presidents controlling the school budget budget and getting different speakers that are not conservative. So we're just presenting them with different ideas, you know, and that's what it all comes down to, giving them different ideas. Speaking of not being conservative, you <laughs> came on all fired up about this story, Huffington Post pointing out 15 trailblazers in Women's History Month. Tell me about it. Okay, so first off, the list is absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, there is no conservative There's a list woman. Right there. Right there. Yeah, it's just it's just leftist propaganda, so that can be ignored. But what I thought was so interesting is that they have the president of Planned Parenthood okay. on the list, right, as well as the co-founders of Black Lives Matter. How is that possible? If a black life mattered, right, then we would be talking about the fact that there are 900 black babies that are aborted every single day. Over right. 19 million black babies aborted since 1973. So this. Right. This list doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Also on that list, so Elizabeth true. Warren, who the president calls Pocahontas, <laughs> Kristen Gillibrand, Nancy Pelosi, but no Ivanka Trump, Kellyanne Conway, no. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Melania. Not Absolutely. Nobody. They Nobody. are punished for wrong think, so they don't right. have the ideas. They happen to think for themselves, which isn't allowed anymore. In a very quick tease, you have a video coming out tomorrow that may pertain to the Oscars. Where do people see that? Um, they can see that at PragerU. Go to, go to any of their, go to their website. You can go to their Facebook page. And the video is entitled, Dear Celebrities, No One Cares What You Think. Wow. Candace, Candace is going to be you, watching You summed up my thoughts. By the way, great having you. You're awesome. Thank you.